Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can choose what hey, I want to say. Nani, nani. We're back. Woo! That took everything I had. I'm uh, I'm in a bad sorts. Yeah, you don't look good. Well, you look fine, actually. Oh, really? You don't. You seem a slightly off, but you look regular. I'm off kilter. I'm off white. Uh, my, I'm off bread. <laughs> <laughs> my head. If you do a before and after a fully loaded a photo. My head is three inches wider. Uh-huh. My cock is thinner. But the the inflammation, the, the the booze, it stays in you. Well, don't you soak in the ice bath and film it and put it on YouTube? I do all that. Okay. Nothing works. It, it, it You look more like Bert the longer you're there. Oh, jeez. I know. So you got to get out, get back, do a pull-up, <laughs> you know, eat, eat a... Uh, a bib lettuce and get back out there. But he's got to be lifting somewhere because he's all he's a big fella. I'll tell you, if you look nip up to the shoulders, look great. Yeah, and you go down down past the uh, the gut and it's it's you know horrific. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's in good shape. He, we were doing squats, deadlifts, and he's he's putting them up. Yeah, he's a big boy, and uh, nip up is is a fun thing. I don't know if it's a good pet name or TV show, but uh, nip up, nip up. Not good for an Asian. It it sounds like you're uh, like <laughs> like you're doing a shoot with a hot lady in a tight shirt, and you're like, we got to nip up, and then you get them all pointy, and then you start rolling. <laughs> Woo! So you're back. You're you're better than ever. You're bigger than ever. You, my, my father's gay. I'm gayer than ever. We flew in today. A five a.m. wake up is one of those weird things where you wake up, you're still fucked up. You go down to the lobby. It's Rosebud. It's Big J. It's Chad Daniels. It's Kelsey Cook. We all get in the car together. What a group! Great group. And then we go right to the airport. And I go, I'm treating everybody to the lounge. No lounge at OKC. Ah, jeez. Get it together there, you Sooners. Yeah, you got a goddamn basketball team. Yeah, it's a great town, the old Bricktown. 504. Yeah, well, Brick Friendly. Brick Brick Town and uh, Timothy McVeigh and... uh, I opened with that. Oh, yeah? I went on the arena and I said, uh, boy, it's good to be back at OKC. Uh, Last time I was here, I had a horrible set, but not the worst bomb you've seen. And they went, oh, nice collection of groans. Mm. 10,000 groans. They might have heard it before, Uh, possibly. It's probably been done. I mean, I would suspect possibly. I had to do it. Yeah, it's fun. I like it. I, I mean, I just did it. I brought it up in the green room, and everyone's like, you got to do that. So I had to do it. I hate this. You got to do it. I get fucked every time. I mean, on the Patreon right now, there's uh, me bouncing a bit, and everyone in the room, I'm not going to name names, you, were like, that's good. That's gold. I did it. Really? The UFC. Remember? Uh, well, UFC was, yeah. with the coach I was trying to be nice. You yeah, know, we had the cameras rolling. I couldn't let they couldn't let you down. Yeah, it was a real tankaroo. It's all on there. Join the Patreon today. There's uh yeah me bouncing bits, Mark saying it's good, and then just eating a cup of shit. Yeah, yeah, and uh you know it's a bomb when uh, you can hear the old straw slurp. The uh, the slurp in the back and. And uh, Salacuse just squeezes. I, I think he also distracts the audience. He squeezes into the front row. I'm like, yeah. what are you doing? Get out of here. I know. He's like a National Geographic guy. I'm like, <laughs> you're going to get killed by the lion. He's and, that guy. And it's shaky and out of focus. But enough about him. Uh, it's a hell of a bonus. Make sure you check it out. And speaking of bonuses, how's Ooh. about that live podcast at the Gramercy? That was lunch. Hot, hot crowd. We mic the audience this time, you fucking come guzzling Nazis. You won't stop critiquing the audio, but this sounds like uh, a peach. It's great. It's peachy sound. Dan Soder on fire that night. Killing, killing the voices, the noises, the giant head. He stole the show. Yeah, he really nailed it. And, and Giannis was amazing. Karen was there. It was really <laughs> something else. <laughs> uh, I think I did the same joke on the intro. I just realized. <laughs> well, what can you do? Well, she deserves it. She was really mean to me. but um, Cute kid. Yeah. Hot, hot lady. Yeah, uh, she's a good girl. I'm only kidding. Someone wrote to me, they're like, I can tell you were pissed at Karen. I'm like, uh, what is wrong with you? I love the people who know what you're thinking. I know, and I'm like, 
we're, we're friends. What are you talking about? Yeah, you know what's the other annoying one when they go, "Hey, good set, but uh, you, you look nervous," and I'm like. But I, I wasn't nervous. They're like, well, you look nervous. I'm like, I was having a great time. Yeah. But they, they know more than you. Yeah, what can you do? Most people are just right. Hey, you're the best. My yeah. father's gay. Fuck me. Blow me. I got to stop reading these comments. But uh, yeah, the live one was uh, special. Half of it's up on the episode feed, and the other half is on the Patreon. Just the good half. And it gets a little dicey, so you might want to fork over a few bucks a month and get in there. Yeah, yeah, we really go in on the old tards. So if you like that kind of humor, you're in luck. That's my humor. But uh, <laughs> yeah, never been a better time to join the Patreon. I got a kid coming. Oh my God, Chuck's uh, playing the deleted uh, files easy, out loud. Easy, what Come the on. hell? I thought that was the Kramer set. <laughs> Jesus Take it Christ. down a peg there, Chucky. God damn. Uh, but yeah, get on the Patreon. I got a, a kid. I can't pay for diapers. And uh, I talked to Mike Racine. He told me his daycare is two thousand dollars a month. What? What is it? What is the kid just staying in a studio in Hell's Kitchen? I don't understand. He's in Brooklyn Heights, so maybe you know it's a gay person with fedora and skinny jeans that watches his baby. I don't know. Two grand a month. Wow, must be a hell of a drag queen. I mean, I made this places to uh, save money in my life, but I'm not giving up my Equinox account for this baby. Just put that kid in the steam room and let it <laughs> let him ride it out. Wrinkle him up a little bit. I think it'll I, I think it'll be fine. I don't know. Yeah. Well, what, what happened? To, what happened to playground? Or you let him play in the street? You get a stick ball or a, a hoop when you you push it down the street. The the wheel. Then you open up a fire hydrant. Good times. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. I don't know. He can he can be a solitary kid. I think that's yeah, good for you. That's what I was. Yeah. My brother was, uh, he was two years older than me. I'm six. He's eight. You'd think we'd hang out, but no, he uh, he was on the, the laptop the whole time. <laughs> the computer, the desktop. They didn't have laptops back then. Uh, yeah. Yeah, what can you do? He was a big nerd. Well, we lived in a scary neighborhood. I think he was like, I'm going to stay in and figure out DOS. What's DOS? It's an old computer programmer. Hmm. You remember DOS? I don't yeah. know DOS. Hugo DOS. There you go. <laughs> DOS Equis. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm hurting, but uh, I landed today. A little embarrassing. I hit the lounge on the arrival, and they all made fun of me. I've done that before. I think that's okay. It's food. It's coffee. Dessert, open bar, why wouldn't I? Yeah, why not? Well, take me through. I mean, so you went out, where'd you go, what happened, what town? I'll give you the whole rigmarole, and I'll just give you the, the fun beats. Yeah, you start, first of all, this thing's been going. This is like the fifth week or whatever. Okay. Which is impressive, because I'm four days in, and I am I look like, uh, who's somebody that looks bad? Chuck? Thank you. <laughs> I look like Chuck after a haircut. Fresh and, haircut on Chuck, by the way. He oh, looks like a yeah. hundred bucks. I'd say 98, but uh, yeah, so fly into Huntsville, which is a bitch to get to, Alabama. Uh, NASA took over. It's a weird mix of hillbillies and autistic Asians over there. Sure. It's a bunch of engineers and, and rednecks, but uh, beautiful amphitheater. You show up, and you, you just it's right into party mode. I walk up. Bert and Nate Bargatze are there. I didn't know Nate was going to be there. Chad wow. Daniels, they're all taking driving ranges out in the field. And then uh, some <laughs> guy slides up on a slip and slide. You're like, holy shit, this is crazy. And they hand you a mimosa. And uh, it's this great theater. Nate does a set. Jelly Roll goes on. Are you familiar with this cat? Who's Jelly Roll? I don't know Jelly Roll. He's a big, fat rapper. He looks like if Ralphie Mae fucked Post Malone. He's got all the tats on his face. He's a big guy. He's he's one. I think he's one of the only rappers to hit a number one on rap and country chart. No kidding. Yeah, he's he's, he's a little hip. He's too hip for us. I don't know the Jelly Roll. He's big. He's by when he came out, the crowd went ape shit. Wow. Yeah, cool guy, nice guy. Uh, made a nice joke when him and Bert hugged on stage. The crowd went crazy. I said it looked like a commercial for blood pressure. I don't think he loved that. <laughs> but a uh, lot, of, lot of dark jokes coming out this week. But So when he plays the hit, do you know it? Are you like, oh, Jelly Roll? Not really, but I don't know the radio. I don't know what the, the kids are spinning these days. And he sings or he just says, hey, what's up? I'm Jelly Roll. He went out there and, and rapped. Then he did a country. Then he did, he did a cover. He did Sweet Home Alabama, but like a e e e e uh -huh. version. And, yeah. you know, it's Alabama. They go ape shit. It was a great time. My d -d 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 donuts. Goddamn. Yeah. Remember the end of the song? You know what the My Donuts? No. 
At the very end of Sweet Home Alabama, they say something in the background. They're not singing. It sounds like he says, my donuts, goddamn. Oh. I don't know what he actually says. But if you type in my donuts, goddamn, it's going to say Sweet Home Alabama. Is that maybe. like one of those Disney things where they like, take your clothes off, kids? All good teenagers take off their clothes. There you go. Yeah. That's just a bumper sticker I have. <laughs> but anyways, sorry. It's an inside asshole. I don't know. I like an Easter egg. But uh, he says something. Maybe we can pull up the clip. I don't know if we're allowed to play it, but it's a weird thing. Probably can't play it. You're yeah, right. Yeah. They'll demonetize. Give it a even good though home. We're not even monetized on YouTube. True. What the hell? Is. Some nerd call in and help us with that, because we've been trying for six months. I think Shelby's in a tower somewhere going, ah, ha, ha, ha. he yeah. locked it up. He's got all the cash. Anyways, the Jelly Roll goes out. He raps. He swings Sweet Home Alabama. Yeah. And I got to follow him. You know, we do this thing where we get together. This is a horrible idea in a comedy group. Bert's there. Chad's there. I'm there. Nate's there. And we, he goes, all right, we got to make the lineup. And everybody wants spots, but mm-hmm. nobody can say, I want that one. Yeah. You know? And don't you just, you can feel it when you're going to get the worst one. I'm just sitting there, and they're like, oh, who's going to go after Jelly Roll? And I'm like, well, that sounds like hell. And then they're like, you do it. I'm like, all right, great. Yeah, it sucks, but I get it because you look through, you know, I don't know the specific lineup, but the f- going first, it's a, uh, what's that word? It's dubious. Uh-huh. No, I don't know about dubious, but it's a dubious it's a dubious brothers? honor, like they say. Oh, I don't know dubious because honor. Who's that guy? You can't put the shittiest comic up first. I see. Everyone will leave, and the show will suck because the, the the shittiest comic is if they're too weak, they they're not right. strong enough to go first. You're a celebrity, kind of. They got excited. You come He's out. A celebrity. Yeah. Who? Ro- jellyfish. You got to be bigger than the roll. No, roll's big. I- I'm a I'm a Danish. Well, he's he's big in Alabama, but not yeah. all over the globe. But we're in Alabama. That's true. But now I'm side conversation. In general, you're bigger than the jelly. I've heard of you. I never heard of him. Well, dubious honor sucks, and he sounds like a running back. Running back. Dubious honor going down for the ball, but it was bad. You know, you got to. You got to say something. It's one of those acknowledge things where you're like, hey, how about that uh, jelly donut? Uh, goddamn donut. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. Then you slide into your act. Uh huh. And did it go over all it, right? It took about 17 out of 20, but I got them. Yeah, I bet it went great. I'm sure they all went nuts. It was fun. And it's just, a, it's a, as Dave Chappelle would say, it's a love fest out there. The crowd is just so happy and the beach ball's bouncing and it's, uh, it's just the sun sets. Jokes, laughs. If you go out there, you feel the love. You see other people smiling. They really need this. Now, let me ask you this. Does the show stay good? Because I see they post the lineups with the times. Yeah. And the show is nine days long. Does the crowd stay hot because they're so excited? They really do. Cypher Sounds hosted, and he did a hell of a job. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to do it because he's got the music and the joke. So he's, ee, 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 look at this white guy. Ee, 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 ee. Hey, is that a black Puerto Rican? Whatever. And they're going ape shit, and they love it. Have I said ape shit enough? But, uh, yeah, they're going crazy, and they do an intermission, mm-hmm. and uh, everybody does 15, so you never really get too bored of somebody. And then when Burt comes, it's like Elvis right before he died. Now, are, they, are, they watch, are you watching the show backstage? Are you hanging out? You're drinking? You're playing games? They, the crew is so good. It's fully loaded. They set it up so well. There's catering, and there's a full bar and couches and a TV right side stage. Ah. So everybody's just hanging out. You got snacks. There's a guy, and I'm getting a top shelf drink made while I watch uh, Big J call an Asian guy a nip up. Wow. <laughs> it's great. It's great. And Big J sitting there doing crowd work in an arena and murdering. They put the kid on the Jumbotron, you know, the guy. He's like, he's a virgin. And then you see some guy who looks like you, and the place goes crazy. Wow. I've had sex. Yeah. Well, you got to have sex to get the herp. You got that right. And uh, and warts and a baby. I got all kinds oh. of proof. Of, of proof is in the pudding. Although the baby was not made in the bedroom. It was in a lab. But that's uh-huh. like but Wuhan. <laughs> that's a lot of evidence. But yeah, yeah I, I fucked. Double digit amount of women. All right. Folks. Call triple in. digit amount of weight. Yeah. You hear that, Sarah? I guess under triple digits would be... Not good. I'd be babies. Yeah. Or, or toddlers or teenagers even. I'm sure there's some 80-pound teenagers. What's the difference between a baby and a Todd? Well, Todd. Barry. Um, glass. Um, I Gack. think a baby, it's, it's, I think a baby is a baby. for. Sometimes I still say, how's the baby? And the baby's four, which is a toddler. Oh, toddler's older. Toddler's older than baby. And then infant is baby. 
Infant and baby are synonymous, I think, are synonyms. Yeah. And then toddler, I think, is they toddle. Uh, like, what, 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 uh, they, they walk and fall occasionally. Yes, yeah. It should be a waddler, because they kind of waddle more than toddle. I don't even know what a toddle is. Yeah, it's a good point. Toddle, toddle of power. love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that toddle was something. Power. All right. But yeah, then there's a, a fetus, which is before infant. Yes, and then a there's fetus a, is, yeah, Then not there's a an human. embryo. Embryo, and then there's cum. Yeah. And eggs. Come and eggs. Come and eggs. Great <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> um, or the worst radio team. So come and eggs become an embryo, which becomes a fetus. Yeah. Which becomes a baby, which becomes a toddler, which becomes a... Boy, a, kid. A kid. Kid, yeah. And then a child. And then a preteen, then a teen, then no one says post-teen. Ah. You know. Uh, oval teen. <laughs> Is that around still? I don't think so. I think it went the way of the dodo. It is quick. Uh there's quick, and then there's uh, slow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was the other one? Hershey syrup. Hershey. That, I was always a Hershey syrup. I never cared because quick was powder, and quick syrup was powder. syrup. Well, now, yeah, but then there was Bosco. Right. I never got into Bosco. I never heard of Bosco till Seinfeld. I didn't either. I think that's the Northeast. I'm from the Northeast, and you still heard I'm nothing. Right in the heart of the Northeast. Now, did you when you put Hershey syrup in your milk? Did you make chocolate milk at all as a boy? Oh yeah. Did you put the did you pour the milk and then put the syrup in or the syrup at the bottom and then the milk? I did milk syrup. Yeah, I was like one of the few that did the syrup first cuz I felt like I could properly see. Ha. Huh. I could see the thickness of the syrup, but everyone literally every single person said I was it was like my sopranos of my elementary yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, no, that's kooky. I couldn't get anyone on board, but uh, Did you ever see uh, remember the show Step by Step? Of course, Day by Day. Yeah, Cody. Yeah, Cody. Mm-hmm. You you know where I'm going with this. Yeah, he poured it all in and then shook it up it in his mouth. It was a good gag. That's a great gag. TGIF was big. That Bang. was huge. Yeah, we had a uh, Full House, Family Matters, Step by Step. Uh, going was... Places. Going Places. Remember that one? Alan Ruck was in that. I don't know Going Places. Going Places. Brand new faces. I think it only did one season, but Alan Ruck. Give that a goog. Alan Ruck. I know Ruck. Going Places. Well, of course you know Ruck. How can you not know Ruck? Uh, he's uh, Ferris Bueller. He's Cameron Fry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Succession. And he's in Succession and... Uh, and Speed. And Young Guns 2 and Speed. How do you like that? I like it a lot. Wow, Ruck. Ruck. I don't know if Ruck can carry a show. Ruck? He carries Succession, doesn't he? I never saw no, it. No, he doesn't carry. He's no a ancillary. Okay. Well, I I regret not trying to get him to play my dad in the yes. film and in real life. Yes. Because I think he could have been a good dad. The Ruck stops here. Uh, Darius Rucker. You found it? Yeah, it aired from September 1990 to March 1991, so pretty short. Yeah, wow. six months, but I was right in there. Well, ruck me. And I was nine. Heather Locklear is on. What? Whoa! She's I didn't a know that. Hot little minx. Yeah, that was exciting. It's weird to look back now that you're an adult in show business and you have the feelings and the emotion. It's weird to think Alan Ruck. At that point, was like, I just got a fucking sitcom. This is huge. Huge. And then it just comes and goes. But I think he was on Spin City for a hot minute as yes. well. Yes. We it's, really want to dig deep. Spin City was very good at the, before he got all, you know, salicusy. Yeah. He yeah. <laughs> got all wiggly. But then they brought old Sheen in, and he was banging whores and doing blow and just running a sitcom. Boy, Sheen really rules. When you sit back him. and really think about Sheen... He's tremendous. Oh, yeah. I love him. Big fan of the Sheen and got AIDS, apparently, and s- still cooking. HIV. Ah. That's, you know, that's lesser. Is it? Of course. Okay, sounds worse to me. No, AIDS is bad. You got hearing AIDS. and That's uh, good. That helps. Teacher AIDS. Well, hearing AIDS is bad. If you have it, that means you're, you're a little off. I guess, but the, uh, the invention is good. That, it's good we have them. Sure. That's good we have AIDS. You know, knocked out quite a few, uh, you know, true. It ne'er-do-wells. Kept, <laughs> <laughs> um, it kept uh, Magic Johnson humble. I'm, I'm jo- I feel like i got to say I'm joking. Ch- ticker across. <laughs> well, a joke they, coming. They because, know who they are. They're not going to heaven. Well, they know, but then they, they, they go, oh, those I bet oh. the, the Tuesdays, they, someone could cut this and, and put it out there, and then I lose oh. my sitcom like Ruck. I don't know. Who are we talking about? The, the people the that gays? are gonna be the, the people that put out the clips and say, "Listen to these two guys." They have AIDS. <laughs> I wish they. Had oh, I AIDS. wish. Yeah, I get it now. I'm saying. I'm I saying. I, I gotta make it clear. And I'm joking. I, of course. Because they pull a clip. Show. All right. 
No one's got AIDS. We love everybody. We love AIDS, and no one deserves to die. Of course. Yeah. Well, there's a couple people, probably. Of course. Yeah, there's some real jerks out there. Yeah. Uh, all right, so, Ruck... Ruck be a lady tonight, and uh, so here's the problem with the tour. It's so fun, the, the fully loaded, and then you you drink, you drink, you do the show, and you're all juiced, and Bert puts all the people who drink on the bus. Uh-huh. Because, you know, it's Rosebud is prego, uh, Sypho doesn't drink, Chad is kind of old, um, <laughs> you know. He's going to love this. And, you know, great guy, funny guy, whatever. That's but too late. You blew it. He doesn't go hard anymore, I don't think. Uh-huh. And so it's me, it's Big J, it's a couple other guys on the bus with Bert, and we just chat it up and get high and keep drinking. And uh, he's got that guy Pete. Pete oh, I Pete, love Pete. Pete Buttigieg. Pete from the bachelor party. Yes. Yes. Pete, Pete, Pete. And uh, he's just making cocktails, and so you'll be like, and did you hear what Todd Glass said about, bah, bah, boop, hand him a drink, guzzle it, and how about what Daniel Tosh fucked uh, Louie in the ass, you know? And we're just going back and forth, and then you wake up at two, and you you leave, and they're like, we're going to the batting cages, and you're like, ah, okay, and then there's eight cameras in your face, and... You do a cold plunge and a gator wrestle, and uh, it's uh, it's a whole thing. So why does Rosebud travel? She's on the other bus. The, everyone, so there's two buses. There's many buses. Oh, yeah. I see. There's a lot of comedians. I see. Well, he just said puts on the bus, so I thought maybe oh, they had a uh, got you know a wheelchair or something. Yeah, yeah. Big J told me later he gets a hotel at every stop secretly and like hangs out in it. And I was like, wow, I didn't know that was an option. Wow, that sounds that sounds like a, a good time. It's a great, it's like summer camp with alcohol and comedy. Yeah, there the tour is in Vegas while I'm in Vegas, so I'm a little uh, nervous to pop over there. I'd say pop in, and uh, I can give you my badge. You can just walk right in, get some catering, make a tea, say hello, and leave. I'd like to think they'd provide me with a badge. Well, if you don't want to go to the to the, the office. Oh, I see. Uh, I heard they're serving Thai food the day uh, you're there. Oh, boy. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Don't believe everything you hear. <laughs> so this is when it gets interesting. Please. It's about time. I know. I'm sorry. Oh, so Jesus. We're halfway through. We land. You know, we, we pack up uh, after Huntsville, Alabama. It was a great time. Great audiences. And we wake up. This is the beauty of the bus. You wake up. Eight hours. Oh, we're in New Orleans. You look outside, it's a jazz band playing and a little black kid tap dancing and a Mardi Gras Indian and people are throwing beads up your ass. And they go, we're doing the second line. And you're like, oh, okay. Somebody throws you a high noon, you guzzle it, and we're walking down bourbon. Wow. And it's for you guys? It's for us. Wow. For us, by us. Yes, FUBU. And uh, I was the New Orleans guy now because it's my hometown. So I got the second line. I told him where to eat. I told him what uh, what jokes to make and all this shit. They got Sean Patton catering it. Wow. Um, catering? He yeah, cooks? His, his parents. No kidding. They catered the wedding. Sean Patton's parents catered the wedding? That was they hard own, to say. Yeah, they own a catering company. Sean Patton's parents catered the wedding. That's difficult. There you go. It's a tongue twist. Say it fast. Sean Patton's parents catered the wedding. That wasn't that fast. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sean Patton's parents catered the wedding. Oh, that all was right, good. All right. uh, but yeah, it was a great time, and uh, so we have a good time, but here's the clinker. Clink it. So then the parents go, hey, you're in town. You're never in town. You got to hang out with us. And I go, well, that's a fully loaded fest. I've been drinking. I'm bleeding out of the ass. I, I, I'm wearing a, a hat with two cups on the side and the <laughs> thing, the... the this, Straw. Straw thing. And uh, they're like, well, we got to get lunch. And I'm like, ah. So I leave the party to sit in a restaurant uh, quietly with my parents hmm. and slurp soup. <laughs> and they're just like, so hot out. Yeah, it's hot. What would you guys do today? Well, we did a second line. And you're like, God, you, I, got, I got FOMO. Like, you wouldn't believe. Uh -huh. FOMO sexual. And everybody's just having fun on a roof, you know, riding fences, and I'm sitting here with, with my dad and his pocket protector. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's tough, these parents. It's tough. You know, I, I, got a, I got a child of my own coming, and it's hard to imagine that at some point he's going to be like, ah, oh, this fucking idiot is calling me right now. I know. And I'm like, bye-bye, son, you but, know? Yeah, zip it up and zip it out. <laughs> but the thing is, you... 
are interesting and fun. Thank you. I agree. My parents, I guess you could say they're interesting, but they ain't fun. No. So I'm like, I'm leaving the funnest thing in America to go sit and talk about bullshit. And then my mom, we're like, we got three hours to kill for the show. Mm. So I was like. Okay, we finished lunch. What do we do now? I'm thinking, like, I'll go back. I'll shower. You guys dilly-dally. But they don't want to go back home, so they're like, well, let's go to the museum. So we have to go sit at the museum, the Southern Food and Beverage Museum that my mom runs. Their museum. Wow. And you just sit there. That was a pool table. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's something. And you're just like, ah. And, you know, great people. Good to see them. But I'm like, well, the show's at 7, uh, but I might as well get there early. So uh, you just show up, and I just plop in the green room, and I still got to shower, I got to shave, I got to brush my teeth. And you just you just have that anxiety, because they're texting like, where's the bathroom? And I'm like, oh, I'm taking them around the back of an arena. This is where the wow. Pelicans play. How exciting do they get to see this stuff? Do they say, this is exciting, Mark? Uh, they they go, are we in the way? Is this weird? And I'm like, no, no, just sit here. And, and then it's so funny because I'm telling everybody on the group chat, I'm like, my parents are in the green room, you know, don't bother them. And they're like, we want to meet them. Because uh, they think my parents are like me. They think I'm, they're squeaking right, right. and jizzing and saying the N-word. And then they go in the green room, and it's Bert's wife. Like Leanne's like, hello, Mr. Dorman. We love Mark. How the hell are you? We're very good. Yeah. And then about, you could just watch two minutes in, everybody's tiptoeing out backwards, like, all right, I tried. And I'm like, you see, welcome to my childhood. So why do you have them at the arena for? They want to go. I mean, that's something. That's something. That's something. That's sweet. They want to go. Very good. I uh, guess. Do they crack junk? Because your dad made a couple cracks at the wedding. He gave a speech and said, you know, Mark pissed his pants. He's a fag or whatever. He said something. I can't remember. Yeah, he's trying. He, he'll he zing me, which is fine. Go ahead and zing me. That's his in. You know, like, hey, fuck him, right? Right. We all hate this guy. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, but at one point, my mom, she's like, I don't really like comedy. And I'm like, shh. You know, and then she meets Bert, and she goes, "I gotta tell you, there was no publicity for the show. Horrible marketing and advertising." And he's like, "Oh, sorry." You know, I'm like, "Jesus, lady!" And then she goes, "Uh, he goes, you want to sit out in the stand?" She goes, "No, I'm good here. I have a book." And I'm like, "Yeah, a book." She brought a book. Was it if these balls could talk? <laughs> I no, wish. That's, that's the Louis Katz. What's oh, the one called? When uh, the balls drop. When the balls drop. If yeah. These balls could talk. And Louis Katz's album, great album, yeah. great title. That book stinks <laughs> or sucks. <laughs> But yeah, it's just she brought a book. My dad's knitting. Um, my dad's like reading the plaques, you know, the facts on the on the wall at the arena. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, he's a he's a wall plaque guy. And uh, woo, boy, so I'm like, here's catering, and you just you just have to babysit, you know, and hold the hand. And the green room is this fun play. People are doing jumping jacks, backflips, juggling shots, you know, smoking weed. And the green room is empty and quiet with my mom sitting there reading. Oh. She, she drove everyone out. It was gold. Oh, God. Plaque psoriasis. I mean, <laughs> I, I couldn't face these folks. I, yeah. A parent is just terrifying. They show up, and they're just old, and your dad had those weird shoes I was confused about. Yeah, he's got some back stuff. <laughs> it's orthopedic. Uh, it's tough, but eventually... Well, I wasn't sure if it was the lens or what. They looked... Uh, I don't know what they looked like. He's got weird shoes. Little bricks. They, they look like Forrest Gump shoe. <laughs> you know, that one the one when the kid's got a one, uh, one off, but he's got two of them. They're uh, like Frankenstein. Yes, <laughs> they look like Frankenstein. Yeah. Gum shoe. So I put my dad out in the crowd because he wants to see it. So he comes back midway and he's like, how much longer? I'm like, you guys wanted to come here. And then he's like, I don't get him. I don't. I didn't get his thing. Uh, I don't think I'm he was very there. good. But he's talking about like a comic that's two feet away, and I'm like, shh. I've, I've had this. I remember shooting my half hour, and you shoot with another comic. Yeah. I remember my two uncles coming in, being like, "That other dude blows." <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, they don't realize we're sharing a green room. I know. I'm like, oh my god. I know it's brutal. I, I fucking dove behind the couch. I was like, this is horrible. Yeah, horrible. And uh, so then the 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 beauty of it is. The, the clinker is Bert won't let him leave. My dad goes to bed at 8.30 every night. You know, he's a 75-year-old man. And he's like, they stayed till the end of the show. It's 11 at night, whatever, 11.30. My dad's like, 
Thank you, Bert. We're going home. And he's like, you're not going anywhere. And he gets my dad in a headlock. And my dad's like, I have a vertebrae issue or whatever. And I'm like, Bert, let him go. And uh, yeah, it, it just it got ugly. Yeah, I couldn't handle that. But sweet people. I'm glad they got to see it. And uh, Tiffany Haddish twerked on my dad. And, and then Bert was so cool because we do a big photo at the end. And they brought my parents up. And they got to get a photo up there. And then Tiffany twerked on my dad. And he, I think he came. Because he was very excited. <laughs> that must have been exciting for them, though. A thrill to hang out. They're on stage. The I arena. think so. You, you'd think they'd mention it. Yeah. But I hope they had a good time, and we just kind of forced it on. I'm like, we're going to make you do shit, even though you don't give any feedback or reaction. Right. That's oh, that's positive. nice. Yeah. So, But I'm just freaking out the whole time. Everybody's like, you're in New Orleans. You get to perform here. How cool is that? I'm like, I can't enjoy it. I'm, I'm spazzing out backstage. Right. Yeah, no, I, w- I just wouldn't even be able to... Kind of do that. I would just get tickets and be like, there you go, do what you want. Yeah, they wanted to come back there. And they don't, I, my mom doesn't even like stand up that much, so she didn't want to go out there. Right. So, Oof. good times, but uh, I'll tell you, I've never been more happy to be in Oklahoma. Cause you oh, just, so Oklahoma was the next night. Oh, well, sorry, Memphis. We went to Memphis the next night, and Memphis was so cool. And uh, I went to Sun Studios. Oh, wow. Super fun, worth a visit. Uh, yeah, I've never been to Memphis. I'd like to go. I, I wouldn't say it's a great town. Did you go to Graceland? I've been before. That's pretty cool, too, but that was further out. But uh, we were in the arena, and we were right by the red... The red... Storm. No. Man. Red, Indian. Red... Red Wings. Skelton. Red Wings? Red no, Wings? The hockey. Boats. What's the team? It's the minor league baseball. Oh, I don't know. Redbirds. Oh, Memphis Redbirds. Yeah, that was the stadium. Outdoor, really cool. They set it up nice, and I walked to Sun Studios. I told everybody, hey, I'm here with Fully Loaded. We got free tickets. I gave all them free tickets. Wow. Saw Elvis's uh, guitar, Elvis's microphone. They let you touch it. He touched my leg. And uh, you see the real studio where they they recorded Hound Dog and all the old shit, B.B. King, Jerry Lee Lewis. Lewis. Yeah, all the pedophiles. Great time. Wow. So I gotta get to Memphis. Memphis, it's it's got some history. The barbecue's good. And that's the beauty of these tours. The shows are great. They threw Kelsey Cook on. She came to hang out with Chad, and she was great. Love and the cook. Good egg, and everybody's hanging out, drinking beers, fun time. And then Bert does the it's the little things. He'll get the best delicacy of the city, and that's dinner. Mm. So you come in after the show, and it's all spread out for you, and uh, just a good time. It's it's very nice. That sounds fantastic. Hey, hey folks. Tuesdays of Stories brought to you by Blue Chew. Woo, we love that Blue Chew. When you're already in the bedroom getting busy, it's not really the time to be wondering whether or not your junk is going to decide to work today. Hello. Never worry again with Blue Chew. It's a unique online service that delivers ED medicine right to your door with the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra. But in a fraction of the cost, you can have the same amount of fun at a way lower price. Just sign up for BlueChew.com, talk with other licensed medical providers, and once you've approved, once you've been approved, you'll be seeing prescription within days. Look, I've tried it. I've used it. I've loved it. It works. It's easy. It's chewable. Now, between us, I've tried some of the other ones. And you got to swallow it, and you got to wait for it to break down in your system, and then your liver's got to shoot it out all over your cock and your taint. This one, you chew it. It's like a, like a Flintstone. And it works quick. No side effects. Sleek little black bag it comes in. You can throw one in your pocket. You can break it in half. Whatever you want to do, they're great. They taste good, and they work, God damn it. Best part is, it's all done online, so you can get started whenever works for you. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it, and we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew when you use free. When you use our promo code TUESDAYS at checkout, just pay $5 for shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code TUESDAYS, to receive your first month free. Wow. Visit BlueChew.com for details and important safety information, and we thank BlueChew for sponsoring the pod. Hey, hey, folks, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by FabFitFun. Are you on the hunt for a new skincare product? Maybe you want a new candle or a throw blanket for the couch. 
FabFitFun has got you covered. Sign up to get a exclusive access to thousands of products from top brands like Fenty and Kate Spade for up to 70% off. This isn't your bargain bin kind of deal either, folks. FabFitFun has so many subscribers that they place huge orders with big promotions, passing those savings right on to you. I got to be honest with you. I just uh, moved into a new place. Uh, I'm an idiot. The lady went on to this and really raked it all in. I mean, we got these uh, throw pillow, uh, throw throw blankets for the couch. They're great. I hate to sound like a like a weirdo, but you you grab a good book, you light a candle, and you throw one of those over your legs. You look like Teddy Roosevelt out there. It's great. She's got one on the bed. They got everything you need. Good stuff for the house. It's all right there. Get it and put some stuff in your home, man. You got you look like an assassin. You got a sheetrock wall with a picture of Raquel Welsh and uh, and a, a pull-up bar. Get get the hell out of here. You got one light dangling on a on a cord. Get some stuff for your home. Make it nice. Make it look good. Make it feel good. Stock up on full-size products from your favorite brands or try something at a new great price you won't find anywhere else. Sign up at fabfitfun.com slash Tuesdays. Customize your box and get access to discounts up to 70% off brands like Fenty, Free People, and Our Place, just to name a few. Not in love with this season's options? Take the credit to shop their exclusive flash sales of up to 70% off. And save on the biggest name brands out there. If you join FabFitFun as a new seasonal member right now, you get a 20% off your membership. Whoa! So your first box is only $47.99 for up to $300 value box each season. But only while supplies last. FabFitFun boxes will sell out. Join FabFitFun today and save. FabFitFun.Tuesdays. Fab Fit Fun slash Tuesdays. Thank you. Hey, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by First Leaf. Don't show up to that summer barbecue empty-handed. Gift your favorite party planner an amazing bottle of wine from First Leaf. First Leaf is America's most personalized wine company that ships wine right to your door in just a few days. You can even choose the day your shipment arrives so you can enjoy your summer fun without worrying about missing a delivery getting started is easy just take a quiz about your preferences and their expert team will pick a selection of wines just for you i love first leaf my lady's a huge booze guzzler she loves the vino sauvignon blanc pinot gris uh prosecco all the all the bullshit she loves it I like a good glass of white, I'll tell you that right now. Give me a give me a sparkling zin or whatever the hell the kids are drinking. Rosé all day. I like it, and it gets it right to your door. You know, there's been a million times where you go, Oh, I wish we had a bottle of wine, but uh, we're, in a, we're, we're, in a, we're in a crunch. We can't go out all the way to the liquor store, all the way to the wine shop, and dick around with the, the fruity cashier. No, you can pick it all. You don't look like an idiot when you're going, is this oaky, fruity, leafy, queefy? Get the first leaf. Get started today and enjoy bottles all season long. Just good to have them there. Make sure you've got a great wine when you want it this summer. you got to try first leaf. Just head over to tryfirstleaf.com slash Tuesdays to sign up, and you'll get your first Six hand curated bottles for just forty four ninety five. Nice six. Holy moly! This is a great gift too. Try firstleaf.com slash Tuesdays. That's T R Y F I R S T L E A F dot com slash Tuesdays to get your first six bottles for under eight bucks a bottle. Wow! Try firstleaf.com slash Tuesday. Then we hop on over to. OKC, okay, hottest crowds in the in the country. This it was really? in, well it was indoor, and plus I I say it a lot. I don't want to sound insulting there, uh, friendly city, big friendly. But when there's not a ton to do, mm-hmm. they really come out in droves, and they're happy to be there. Of course. I mean, they I, all the time you get messages. I mean, it's the same two people. But hey, you come to Oklahoma, or whatever. Because we did that one gig, that casino. Remember that lady? 
We, did a gig. we didn't do it together. I oh. did it with Mackie, but you did it. Casino. It's in Oklahoma. It's in a casino. I thought we did do that together. We did a live Tuesdays, remember? What? Was that Oklahoma? I don't think we did an Oklahoma live Tuesdays. We did a we did a live one and we did stand up. And a co- no, that was in Arizona. That was Arizona. that was Tempe Improv, not Improv. No, that was out there. That was in the middle. That was in the desert. That was a casino. It was. Yes, that was in Arizona. That was like the day my grandmother died. Ah, yeah, how about I was that? really sad. You weren't. Helpful, but uh, uh, I didn't even know till now. No, I told you. No, uh, no. we 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 did. Out, right I think the other door. Sarah was there, and she had some friends. Yes, remember? we went yes. to the bar. Okay, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. that was December of nineteen. Oh, wow, yeah. it feels longer ago, but I guess that's four years. Almost four years ago. Yeah, huh. but no, that that doesn't matter. There's a gig in Oklahoma. You fly to. Ah, uh, yes. Fuck. Remember, there was a lady that yes. ran it. Very nice. Yes. You fly to one state and you drive to the other state. Arkansas. Yeah, that was fun. That was a fun gig. I think you fly to Little Rock. and Anyways, it doesn't matter. Paid well, too. But anyways, yeah, people, they're, they're starved down there because there's not much of a comedy club. There's a comedy club in OKC. Yeah, Bricktown. That's the name of the club? That's the name of the club, and they're opening another one. But uh, <clears throat> great town and great, great club, too. Thunder. Yes. Thunderstruck. But uh, yeah, great crowd, and just when you're back indoors, because you know you did the 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 red wings, red vines, red ass, red birds. state, red birds skin, and uh, you do the red skeleton, and it's it's outdoors, so it's fun, but it's still outdoors, and you get back in that OKC Thunderdome, and it is a hot one, baby, and I gotta say, everybody killed. I popped a couple shrooms at the end just because I didn't want to drink too much. Still did. But Chad went up, and he did some comedy. Everybody in the back, it, the shrooms were kicking in. It was a, it was all just just pure joy. I'm like, this is insane. We're doing an arena. It all hit me. You sure. know, and you get misty, and Bert's wife is watching, and Chad is murdering, murdering in an arena with, like, killer stuff. Heavy duty, great comedy, and we're all dying on the couches watching. We're all like in awe, like, holy shit, where's this guy been? This is great. And he lives in the middle of Minnesota, and he's just killing. And then at the end, he goes, I want to thank Bert and Leanne. This is such a special night. I got chills. Leanne is watching the TV. She starts crying. Wow. It was cry. incredible. A magical night. Then they bring us all up at the end. The crowd, these crowds are so magical. They, 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 three hours and change, and they're just still. Giving it to you. That's unbelievable. It sounds Skankfest esque. Yes. That like they could just go all day. That's what I'm confused by. Because you see, there's like an hour and a half of show, then a half hour break, and another hour and a half. I'm like, how can they still be going? Yeah, they just but they love go. It. They love it. They wow. love comedy. Anything you reference about like hey, Segura, but and they're like, ah, you know, they just they. It makes you realize. We're tapping into people, Jerry. We're in there. We're right in there. Fingers are in there. We're checking the prostrate. They're semening. Yes, semening. That's a good word. I like it. Uh, wow. Boy. Yeah. yeah really Chad is special. top 10 comic, maybe top five. I mean, he's a, a killer. I know. And he lives in the middle of it. He's like one of those movies like, oh, you know, when the guy, the, the army guy retires and they're like, no, he lives in the cabin in the woods. He, he hates people. And they're like, but we need him. Right. Call him up. And that, that's Chad. Yeah, he's uh, he's one of the best, and it really gives you hope. He's just like raising a son and a daughter in the middle of the lake. Exactly. And uh, he goes on the road. He comes back. Yeah, yeah. So go check out the, the the Chad D man. He's a killer. And then Bert went up. Bert killed. Bert's impressive because stuff that would happen that day, he would just go out and talk about it and murder with it. So right. You're like, oh wow, you're like a real real pro. And I was blown away too that Bert does like an hour at the oh, end of the show. Oh, full hour. I just assumed you, you see the tour, you see the lineup, you think, "Oh, that's a smart move. You bring like 10 great comics, then you only got to do 20 at the end." Exactly. But he does a full hour. Full hour. He doesn't have to, but he does it and they they want every minute of it. That's insane. They're, I mean, that is really two and a half hours. Oh, Pow. Yeah. Pow. Pow. They're eating right out of his belly button and uh then that's a party after and then they set up Whataburger. I had a milkshake. I'm on shrooms. It was just a beautiful night. Wow. And then you wake up at five, beep, 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 and you you head downstairs and get on a plane. Woo, and you're home for two days. Two days, and it's off to Chicopee, Mass. Yeah, he's driving? 
Yeah, I need an opener. You, who, who's a good? What about the Sullivan guy? Sean Sullivan, one of the best. Would uh, he do it? He might be working. Yeah, I'm sure he would do it. Can um, I get his info? Yeah, all right. I'll send it to you. Uh, remind me after the show. Yeah, right. Sullivan rules. He's great. Uh, who else is up there? Well, Western Mass is a night you could drive with someone. And it's straight up. You get a New York person, maybe. So yeah. over the car. That's not bad. That's okay. Yeah, it's... you got you know Steve Rogers, Andrew Chavone. Uh, you know who just hit me up and told me they had a car is Oscar. The gay. Gay Oscar. Uh, gay Oscar. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. How far is that from Bean Town? I think about two and a half hours. Oh, three that's, hours. That's it's heavy. Western. Yeah, it's out there. Okay. We got Sean Sullivan, Mike Whitman, Dan Bulger. Yeah. Yeah. Bulger was busy. Uh huh. All right, but I'll figure it out. But yeah, yeah, let me know. It's a, it should be a hot room. We'll see how it goes. Uh, that's exciting. But I have the same thing. I've like been gone for a week on vacation. I'm home for two and a half days, and then just going for two weeks. Yeah, well, hit me. Where, where the hell you been? You saw the fam? You saw the the kids? What's going on? Yeah, you know the fam. You know how it goes. We yeah. made a film about it, and then we <laughs> just went ahead and recreated it up in uh, Maine. It was the whole. It was the scene for the movie. I lost it. I was like, "Fuck you, motherfuckers!" I flipped a table. It was it was crazy. They're drinking. Yeah, yeah. It was really something. I mean, uh, it's not even worth telling. Just oh. go go watch the film. Fourth of July movie dot com or uh, Louis C K dot com, whatever it is. Ninety six on Rotten Tomatoes with the audience. Yeah, the audience liked it. Oh yeah. Critics didn't care for it. Mm. They, they probably didn't get it. Nah, right, right over their head. That kind of humor. Not really our kind of humor. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a crazy week and a half. I had, well, first my niece is going to Pace University, ah. which is very exciting. And uh, I never went to college. It's so exciting to go to a campus. Oh, and you just want to fuck everybody, you know? Yes, hot kids. And uh, yeah, so she's going to Pace. So she came down with my, my sister and my brother-in-law and my nephew. And it's exciting because I never have visitors. My mother's afraid of bridges, so she won't come to New York. <laughs> True story. Um, having a child, she won't come. She doesn't like bridges. Really? Is that what she calls uh, blacks? Uh, it's not a bad term. <laughs> no, it's not bad. Yeah, they got the, a couple of suspension bridges in that neighborhood. <laughs> Woo, burning bridges. So no one comes to visit. My family just don't come. That's, yeah. what, that's what she said. I can't stop doing that. That's what she said. I got two 15-year-old uh, cousins and a nephew, and uh, they're obsessed with that's what she said. It sucks that, that that got ruined by all the nerds out there, because it's a good zing. It's fun. And then I told them, I was like, you guys do it too much. You're limited to three a day. Uh-huh. And there was like a scene from The Office. I started setting them up. I was yeah. like, look at the way the salty white liquid smashes all over the place. And uh, they're like, they're all laughing yeah. and giggling, you know, it well, was fun. And the problem is some people get greedy with it where they're doing stuff and it doesn't make sense. You know, you're like, oh, this table is wobbly. That's what she said. You're right. like, nah, that one doesn't really connect. Well, it was fun, too, because I kept setting them up. I would say, you know, I love watching it burst all over my chest. And yeah. they would go... It's no good when you try to force it. And then I would go, that's what she said. Hey, so it was the fun. You zinged, you ping-ponged it. I set them up, they refuse, and then I get one. And, of course, they crack on that. It's fun. That's... You think of toddlers as being so fun, and they are, but and annoying. They're dumb. But then you get a, old, you get a teenager, and my nephew and I, we're, we're, you know, we're doing push-ups together. We're playing pickleball. We're playing tennis. And I'm still at an age where I beat them at everything, which is fun. That's nice. Yeah, it's exciting. So we had... Uh, Love to beat a kid. Tennis courts and pickleball, and we went from one to the other. It was quite exciting. And uh, But anyways, they came down to New York, and that was fun. You, you don't realize how meaningful it is. This is what I was going to say is nobody ever visits me. My family does not come here. Sure. Ever. For 17 years. They live 200 miles away. They don't come. My parents came when my, expendi- my appendix exploded and when I did Letterman. Wow, those are weird times. Yeah, that's over 17 years. Wow, but... Do you want them to even show up? That's the that's the the twist. Is like, hey, they won't show up. But if they did, you'd be miserable. Yeah, I think in your mind you want them. You want a different verb. You want them to come and be like, where do you live? Take us to the comedy cellar. We always. This is like you would uh, would be ideal. Yeah, many people have. Right. They say, what about this comedy cellar? They don't. I don't even know if they know about the. Com- no, no. Take no, us no. to the stand. Where are you working? How exciting! Like, Let's go there. This is a bodega. It's open all night. You just walk over here. Right. Where do you do your laundry? You know, you want your. You'd like to think that be really invested. Yeah. And interested. And as you get older, especially when you're successful and you you have a house and a wife, you hope that people will be like, "Wow." Yeah. You know what's funny is a lot of a. Our friends have kids, and they're like, man, having kids is tough because they don't care about anything. You go, look at this movie. I love this movie. And they go, ah, look at this thing. And they go, ah, your parents are like that. You're the adult, and they're the kid. 
Yes. They don't care about anything you're doing. It's tough. So, uh, but anyway, so it was exciting to have my, my sister and her kids come and, you know, you take them around. I take my nephew across the Brooklyn Bridge and I'm like, this is exciting. But, you know, I don't know how into that he is. He's more into sports. I'm like, mm. we would have been better off going to a basketball court and playing. Yeah, yeah. But, um, that was that was fun. Let me uh, see. Oh, we went. To, I took them to the Mets game, which is exciting oh. for them. They've never been to a ballpark that isn't Fenway, which is a better ballpark, but it's 127 five years old. Sure, whatever it is, 111 years old, I guess. Ah, but um, like Biden. Yeah, so they've never been to a ballpark. So I said, let's go to the Mets game. We take the seven train out there. I buy tickets. It's very exciting. And then there's a group of little kids in front of us. And uh, the kids got on the big screen, oh. and then the kids all went to uh, go to the bathroom or whatever. So then the, I guess the camera was just like, well, I'll just keep the camera over here. So I, got, uh, I started dancing. I got on the big screen, which hey. is very exciting. And what was fun is I had just been talking about how on the big screen, I got recognized by a few twos guys, hey. too, which was fun. Hey, where are the cameras? But I was just talking about all the amateurs on the big screen, as soon as they're on the screen... They leave focus on the camera and they look at themselves. They want to see themselves on the of big course, screen. And it's, it takes a real discipline to stay at the camera because so, it maximizes how fun it is to watch. Yes, yes. Because if you're watching the big screen, you see someone, all of a sudden they're on the camera. They go, oh, hey. And right. now they're not performing for the camera anymore. Yes, yes. But I'm an old veteran in the Screen Actors Guild. Oh, yeah. So I, I just locked right in the camera. Where's my close up? I locked right in the camera and I gave him this. Oh, I did one of these, and uh, it really stayed right on there. Very exciting! Wow, yeah, it was fun, and uh, you know everyone else is looking because they want to see. But you got you got to sacrifice seeing yourself. Yeah, yeah, for the performance. Good man, you're an artist. I care. Integrity. There's some. There's an art to swiveling your hips on the big screen at uh, City Field, folks. Of course. Now I wonder if they're going to make that in the sports center. Like, hey, some uh, special needs kid is twerking in the in the Mets stadium. Well, I didn't have a Mets shirt, which is. It's also very difficult to get on the big screen when you're not sporting the gear. Sure, they like the gear. Or they want, yeah, exactly, an actual special needs or a boy or whatever. But right. I nailed it. So then the group of kids comes back. There's like seven of them and a couple parents there. And they go, we saw you on the big screen. We saw you. We recognized you. And uh, that's exciting. We got we to gotta get back on there. I said, well, we'll get you on. And so then... It becomes the mission of my family to get these kids on the big screen. Oh, yeah. And then uh, I got my camera ready because I'm like, we can do it. So we were dancing and, and twerking and doing the crazies. They get on the big screen. I snap a couple photos, nail the photo of them. Whoa! Which is exciting. Now I'm doing service, you know. Well, I mean, do these kids sit back and go, how about this uncle? Eh, well, this isn't my kids. These are random kids. Even weirder. I'm taking photos of random kids. Wow. But because they're so focused now on getting on the big screen and seeing themselves. Yeah. So then they all go crazy. We did it. They're high five and smushing, whatever. Smash. What, what do you. High five? High five, and that's it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Dapping. Dabbing? I think it's dabbing. Can we get that framed up? I want to see that photo. What that. Right here. Well, it's not the best photo ever. Okay. But it's a photo. And then I said to the lady, which is a little creepy, if we had some rapport, because she was like, we saw you, and I was like, we'll get you guys on the big screen. And then uh, I go, hey, turn on your uh, airdrop, I'll uh -huh. get you this photo. And she goes, oh my God, that would be amazing. So she does the allow anybody for 10 minutes. Oh no, here come the swarm of cock. Well, you want to, I mean, I got her the photo and she was like, thanks so much. And it's funny because now the kids just, kids don't know anything. They just think we're friends now. Right. Because I'm talking to their mother. So yeah. the kid's like, let me see the photo. He's like looking at it like this. He's like, oh, nice. Uh, it's just fun. Kids are fun. So I airdropped the lady the uh, the photo and then they leave because like they hit their goal. It's the seventh inning. They're like, all right, we're out of here. Thanks again. And I realized I got eight minutes still on the clock uh -huh. to airdrop her, and I got 48 photos of dumps I've taken that are 35 oh, inches long. Oh, no. The, the photo dump. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, you know, you think about it. You can't, though. But she doesn't know who I am. Yeah. I, it just comes up as what says Joseph's iPhone. Uh, but I could have hit her, not to mention I got just a, a, a gross of Sarah's tits, oh, which are not gross. I'm going to open my airdrop. And, um, so I was like, I could airdrop her tits and a dump and, uh, you know, whatever. But eh, I decided not to. A good boy. Can I say this? One nice thing about being a lady mm. is if you sent a bunch of 
dick pics on accident, you'd get in trouble. Like somebody's like, this is a f- assault. I'm getting these dick pics. I didn't ask for this. But if you sent out tits on accident, nobody would be mad. Right. Nobody would go, this is a, a assault. This is sexual abuse or whatever. They would just go, oh, tits. But pussy lips, you Man, might. Because that that's a more weird. equivalent. But who's going to complain? Because a woman's not going to complain because she's like, well, I have that. But a guy's going to go, hey, I got some free lips. She might. We could test this. I All mean, right. we start airdropping, like, really, like, in a pussy, like a spread lip, uh, hairy. spread, yeah, that's no good. The fungus, the dispatch, not dispatch, what's it called? Discharge. Discharge. Yeah, compact discharge. You know, there's some there's some yucky pussies out there. Oh, don't I know it. <laughs> um, but uh, I see your point. Yeah, a cock is much more offensive than a buzz. Yeah, there's something about a cock. It's like a weapon. You're like, yeah. Right. It feels like it's coming off the screen. Plus, it's covered in warts and scars. Sure, depending on prints. the outbreak. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but anyway, so that was fun. But then I so I had three days of um, family time, family ties, and then they leave, but we leave the same night to go to Maine. It just coincides with the family vacation. Right. So now that's 10 days of family, which is a lot of uh, days of vacation. Yes, maybe too many. So we drive up to Maine. We stop off in Newburyport, Mass. Great, Sarah and I, and then my family's up ahead of us. And then we stop in Newburyport, drive through the night, wake up, have a nice morning there. Beautiful town if you're ever up on the uh, the North Shore mm. of uh, Massachusetts. And then we drive up to uh, Booth Bay Harbor. Booth Bay. As every year for 35 years now, whatever. And... Uh, Rent the house. The family's uh, challenging. You know how it is. Sure. With the family. And this is this 27 of us. Everyone's oh, boozing, the whole thing. Wow. That's lot a lot of, of list. A lot of fun, though. You know, a lot of good time. Uncle Dale is down the street, and uh, I got cousins who are fun, and we're playing cornhole and pickleball, and it's raining the first couple of days. We make mm. do. We got we had a big house with a wraparound porch. We play cornhole underneath the, uh, the roof, so it's like that rainy day cornhole. I'm DJing. I'm blasting tunes. And we're down in the, the point. It's called Ocean Point, which mm. is spectacular. The most beautiful place I've ever been. Wow. And all the neighbors are nice. They're, you feel like part of a community. Everyone's walking by. Hey, how do you do? Oh, that's nice. Then I hook up the, uh, I got the fart noises from my niece and nephew, oh. the little ones. They love it. I hooked it up to the Bluetooth. So then we start doing a gag. Every time someone walks by, I got my uncle going like this. Oh, I don't feel good. And I, I blast him with a... <laughs> And uh, it's gold. Never, never, get, never, not funny. It's gold, and some of the people get offended. They get really like, mm, and some of them are laughing. It's, yeah. it's a good time. That's that's the tits. Yeah, you hit them with a real Bluetooth fart. That's oh, fun. Love it. Get that bass up too. I mean, it was great. The kids, it's gold, and the little. Every time the kids ran by, I would be like, "He's in the lead. You gotta catch him." Okay, here comes red shirt, blue shirt, and they they really respond. They start sprinting up the street. Man, kudos to you, fatty, because that's. You say 10 days? Well, seven days up there, but three days with the, yeah. I got to tell you, if I was there, my family, your family, my dad's gay, I would be drinking heavily just to get through that. That's a long day and night. It's a lot. The fact that you do that sobriety is uh, a feat, Betty. And they're drinking heavily, but I got Sarah and the children, which is fun. Sounds like a band. (laughs) <laughs> or, a, or a cult, uh, but then so then uh, one of the days it's you know it's a little overcast whatever but I got to get in the ocean you, you know got to do it it heals yes it heals I love the ocean it heals uh, you know warts emotional if you're feeling down get yourself in the ocean any body of water but the ocean particularly it's nature's bath it's really tremendous but the water is about thirty seven degrees Aye. up there but I like it I like the cold water. And so I, I grab my nephew. I go, let's go swim. And Sarah and I are playing, uh, and my nephew are playing pickleball, which was fun because it was Sarah and my nephew. They're 15, and he, she's pregnant versus me. Two on one, 2v1. Two uh-huh. Dominated. Yeah, I figure. Fucking dominated. Well, she's playing for six or whatever. Yeah, I'm smashing them right at the, the baby. I don't give a shit. Yeah, they need to learn sometime. Yeah, first game was like 15-8, second game 15-2. Let them, let them fucking have it. Yeah, welcome to reality, cunts. Yeah, so that was fun. And then uh, I played my nephew one time. He was up 6 nothing. I came back and beat him. Oh. He was up 4 nothing. came back, beat him. But yeah, Come on, get, get out of here. Well, you let him have a little moment in the sun, and then you really give him the business give him the business then we played two on two hoop me and my my nephew who who scored like 25 in a high school game he's legit 
He played with my cousin versus me and Uncle Dale. Our combined age, 86. Uncle Dale's four foot four. Sure. You know, he wears a size three shoe. Oh, yeah. And he's a football player. He's a fireman. He can't play basketball. We tune them up, too. Wow, but don't they got a hoop at the station, I assume? Yeah, but that's just to, like, you know, throw jizz at. I don't know. They're, I they're like, they play a little bit, I think. That's but, what she said. Uh, but anyways, we, we just dominated. You know, it's good to be in your 40s because you can still beat children to death yes heard them put a beating on them but any jizz so then we go down to uh i say we played pickleball for about an hour i'm pouring sweat it's 85 degrees i go let's go jump in the ocean sarah didn't bring a bathing suit she's pregnant my father's gay so she brings a book my nephew and i we go swimming it's 50 degrees we swim around Come off, we, we get up to the ramp where all our clothes are, and he's like, I can't find my glasses. Ah. And I'm like, hmm, they might be at the bottom of the ocean. Ah, I guarantee they He's are. like, I think I might have worn my glasses into the ocean. I'm like, you didn't notice them fly off your face? Yeah. He's like, maybe I didn't have them, but I had them at pickleball, yada, yada. And then you feel bad because he feels terrible. He's lost his glasses. They're $100, yeah. Warby Parker. He can't see anything. We're like, well, maybe they're at the house. So we walk back to the house. Tear the house apart. They're not there. Feels like a piece of shit, and you just uh, feel terrible. And I go, well, let's go down there and look for them in the ocean. Yeah, look, I mean, there's some jellyfish right now reading the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> and, um, and old Uncle Dale, he's got a couple scuba masks with the thing and the and the big cock off the top of uh, it. Ah, the snorkel. Snorkel, that's yes. what I meant. And uh, so we go, let's go look for them. So we go down there, and the tide has gone out 25 feet. You're sitting there. You're like, we're never going to find glasses. We look like idiots. I'm asking people. I'm like, have yeah. you seen glasses? They're like, glasses, get out of here. My yeah. father's gay. <laughs> See a pufferfish with a couple of readers? You know what's funny? My uncle saw a pufferfish while oh, he was looking for glasses. How do you like that? I like it a lot. All right, puff. So we go, all right, well, we're not going to find the glasses. You're going to have to feel shame. Everyone's mad. we got to get new glasses. And Uncle Dale goes, if they're anywhere, they'd be in this seaweed right here we're like yeah that's crazy they're not in the seaweed so you know we only have two masks and i don't have my glasses on because i'm in the ocean i don't want to lose them like him yeah yeah so i'm like just i got no mask i'm doing this get out of here they're floating around doing this i'm like all right and then you just hear i got him wow my my nephew comes up and he found him which is so exciting wow he's got the glass it was like you know evil dead or whatever he pops out of the water glasses right. first and it becomes it's all worth it yes. to lose the glasses just to find him i went crazy i went yeah the odds of that are insane it's the ocean the ocean jerry and the, everyone goes hey they're like clapping and everything and we all came together and hot it was like the world series it was That's like rocky insane. one Wow, what are the odds? Wouldn't that be funny if you put him on? He's like, not mine. <laughs> Someone else's. <laughs> well, he comes back. They're all they're saltied up, and he comes back, and they're a little beat up. But everyone's so excited. And, and everyone had all the doubt. They're all sitting there going, he of always course. loses his glasses, this piece of shit. And he comes back with the glasses. We snorkel. It's worth You want to just throw your car keys in the ocean just to try to find them. Just to find them. I uh, went to Gulf Shores, not bragging, as a, as a college kid. Me and my girlfriend went. We fucked in the ocean. It's very salty. It wasn't good. But whatever, I, I swam with my ID and my credit card in my pocket. Mm. I come back, oh, the credit card's there, but the ID's gone. It was in my bathing suit pocket. I go, I got to get a new ID. Fuck. Two weeks later, letter in the mail. I was on the beach, saw this. Wow. Good Samaritan, here's your ID. Well, that's what's nice about the uh, the tide. It goes out, and you're like, and the seaweed catches it. Yes. And you're like, well, now we could, that's what I was saying to them. I was like, well, we could just come back in an hour. Right. And possibly the tide also giveth and taketh away. It could yes. take the glasses with it. Good detergent. But you hope they skid on the ground, and uh, it did, and uh, all's well that ends anal. There you go, folks. And so then... Not good for the dead body disposal. What's that? Well, oh, the tide. Yeah, the, tide the tide brings it back. Brings it back, and now we got a crime scene. Exactly. Well, then, so then uh, Saturday morning... There's a big road race. We get there Saturday, whatever, the 1st, and we're staying until Saturday the 8th. Sure. The 8th I am. And, uh, Henry the 8th. We get there Saturday, and the lady says, well, there's a big road race next Saturday. Well, I went, well, I'm leaving Saturday, but maybe I'll run the road race. What's a road race? A road race. But like NASCAR? No, you run. Oh. Uh, you run a road race. Oh, okay. Like a 5K. You never heard of a road race? I never called it a road race. Oh, that's what it's called. Really? You heard yeah. road race? You run on the road. Rage. Road rage. Mm-hmm. Never rode red. Thought it was just a race. Yeah, no, it's a race, but it's on the road. I see. 
You run up the street. Okay. Road race. Got it. Road runner. Now, now you know. Okay. Uh, master race. Oh, you got uh, that right. <laughs> race card. <laughs> Uh, what was I saying? Road race. Road race. So I go, oh, okay, I'll run the road race, 5K. Uh, and I go, that's a nice way to leave. You're, you wake up the it's 8.30 a.m. There's a kid's fun run, one mile at 8 a.m. Oh, I like that. And I go, man, well, they're always running for me. Yeah. <laughs> so I go, I'm going to run this road race. So, you know, you have the whole week, and uh, there's some drama towards the end. Doesn't matter, yada, yada, watch the film. And then uh, Saturday morning, I wake up, and I'm like, here we go. And I'm trying to convince everyone in my family to run. I'm like, come on, somebody run it with me. Because you just want to be part of a community, you know? Sure. Like, let's be fun. We're always so secular. The sobriety, you're playing pickleball, cornhole, road race, swimming. This is the healthiest trip ever. I like to be uh, athletic, you know? So I'm like, come on, if somebody run. Sarah would run, but she's got a cold, and she's pregnant, and uh, she hates me. Sure. So I'm asking everybody. No one's in. So I go, well, whatever. I'm just running it myself. Get to the start line. Sarah comes over. She feels like shit, which is a bummer. But um, So we're sitting there, and there's about... 95 people running the race, and you just feel that community. They want to sing the national anthem before. No, they're playing the national anthem beforehand because uh-huh. it's like, you know, 4th of July. Uh-huh. And they're like, uh, oh, the, the phone isn't working. The DJ was supposed to play it originally, but he disappeared, which was weird. And then they're like, mm. we'll just play it on the phone into the bullhorn. Yeah. Not working. And they go, all right, well, we'll just figure it out. We want to do it. And then some little kid just starts singing. She just goes, oh, say, ca-. and ah. everybody joined in. Wow. The who's, whole town. Who's this kid? I don't know. Somebody. All so right. So the whole town joins in. We all sang. And it's one of those things that we like, we're comedians. So like, I'm laughing. I'm like, this is so stupid. I'm yeah. going like, oh, and I look around. Everyone's like very serious. Oh, yeah. Hat on the heart and everything. Yeah. And they're like trying to. So Sarah and I, I'm like, there's a million jokes I just want to make. Because sure. I'm in a crowd. I'm like, this is stupid. The song oh, yeah. stinks. But, uh, you know, you try to be earnest. It was actually quite sweet. Earnest goes to camp. <laughs> and um, also before, there was a high school kid I kept seeing run around the point the whole week. Uh-huh. And then he was showing up to the race. And uh, our the house we rented was right on the finish line. So I'm on the little porch. And he was walking by all serious. I was like, this guy's winning. I know this guy. I've been watching you all week. You're going to win. And uh, he was a cool kid. He just pointed like this. Uh, no uh, humility, just real serious. But I was like, I like this kid. Uh, Fast forward to after the race, I finish. I see that kid. I go, did you win? He goes, oh, that kid killed himself. And uh, it turned out he lost by seven seconds to like a Ooh, man, to like a 25-year-old guy. Wow. But you can see he was devastated. He thought he was going to win. He didn't win. Life lesson. I hope he dies. Yeah. Suck it, fatty. But so this is, uh, this is the funny-ish part to me. I had to add ish because... People email me and be like, no, it's not. You suck. Right. So it won't happen again. <laughs> yeah, um, the finish line literally ends in our, like at in front of our house uh-huh. that we rented. It's our last day there. Now, you know my mother. She's a neat, freak, cleanly Nazi oh, lady. Oh, that like, house, not a speck. Not, nothing out of order. No speck. Not easy way to grow up. She's on the floor with a toothbrush like Bubba Gump, just right. brushing it. Shrimp scampi, shrimp salad, shrimp sandwich, shrimp gumbo, <laughs> shrimp etouffee. She's cleaning up. She's kicking us out. She's like, get out of here. Don't open a fucking thing. Don't, don't open your shoes. Get your shoes out of here. Don't think you're eating breakfast here, you piece of shit. Put yeah. deodorant on. Leave the house. Everyone's standing outside like with <laughs> luggage and like Ajax on their forehead. And no bridges. And so then... I finished the race, good race, ran well, feel uh, proud of myself, very hilly course out there, it was brutal. Mm, Jonah Hilly. Finished the, the race, then, oh, this happened early, it doesn't matter the order, the little kids fun run, first of all, that uh, yes. house before us, it's a mile run, all the kids, they don't know how to run, they just take off sprinting, they're like seven years old, yeah, it's, it's a mile, they zigging, can't, zagging. they're zigging, zagging, sprinting. So then they disappear. You don't see them. The finish line's in front of our house. This eight-year-old kid, bright red hair, Celtics jersey, straight out of central casting. He runs. He comes in second place, hobbles, literally falls like Jim Morrison. He staggers and falls onto our front lawn and goes, ooh, ooh. 
Blah! Projectile vomits all over the yard. My mother is spraying down windows and cobwebs, oh, painting, man. cleaning. Hilarious. And an eight-year-old red-headed Irish kid with blonde eyelashes just vomits oh, all over the yard. He's eating nothing but sweet tarts and, and Coca-Cola. I mean, just white, foamy, oh. with yellow streaks, puke. And it looks like we just trashed the place. Yeah. And then everyone's got their cups because it's, it's literally the finish line. So everyone finishes their race and falls on our yard. They got the paper cups. Wow. They're wrinkling them and throwing There's bodies everywhere. At one point, a guy walked into our house. I swear to God. <laughs> He's got the little race bib on. He just yeah. opens the door and walks in. I go, hey, partner. And he goes, oh, whoa, is this your house? He's uh, like, shit, I'm so sick. He's like, I don't know my way around here. I was like, you're looking for that building down there. He's in my home. He's got muddy shoes. Oh, your mom probably tased him. I mean, it was wild, but there's puke all over. And I was like, you got to leave a note saying, hey, the race came through. Yeah. Uh, yada, yada. Ghibli jizz. Wow. That's my story. But uh, it was really fun. You run the race. But the, the thing I didn't factor in is it's like a nine-hour ride home. So I ran a 5K uphill and then just got in the car and sat for seven hours. So I got out at McDonald's and just the legs are stiff. Yeah. My, my ass smells like an armpit. My arm smells like an ass. Yeah. But what a what a trip. And it's fun to be at the finish line. You get the best view. Yeah, it was. I mean, we were sitting on our porch with a cup of tea, watching the kids run in, and then uh, my family. You know, they were there. They were rooting me on, and that was exciting and, and clapping and uh, all, all right. that jizz. And uh, my father, you know, he doesn't give you show a ton of affection, but he walked over. He was like twenty four forty. He went over and looked at the time for there we me, go. and I said, "Hey, thanks." How do you like that? All right, Steve. So that was nice. Oh, geez, we got to wrap it up. All right. Well, but, hey, what's, there you go. Is that Maine? Maine. Yeah. The only one syllable state. There you go. Toothpicks. More coastline than uh, Argentina. They say that. Yeah. I don't know. Stephen King. Yep. Stephen King, uh, Leah Bonima. Ah. Emma Willman. All right. Uh, Francis Ellis. Oh. That's about it. And uh, probably a. You know what's crazy? I did a. a podcast in Brooklyn, deep, deep Brooklyn. Beautiful. Uh, Brighton Beach. Oh, yeah. I have a thing where I, I pass by a high school, and I like to Google the alumni. Yeah, me too. Do you do that? Yeah. Notable people. Brighton Beach High School, uh, notable alumni, seven major league baseball pitchers. No kidding. In a row. I was like, what is going on at this school? Is there a great baseball factory going on over there? What the hell is this? Wow. Yeah, it's well, a fun fact. Probably a lot of them were like the 40s and 50s. Yeah. Back in the day, you got to figure like, 40% of the country was living in New York City. That's true. It's like, you know, all the Italian kids, hey, you know, right. Ralph Branca or something. They must have had a great coach or something because yeah. they were pumping out the pitch. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Everyone that's old in baseball, you see, they're from New York. The all whole Brooklyn. gang. All Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. Yogi Berra and all those guys. Mm hmm. Uh, but all right, yeah, good stuff. Uh, what do you got cooking? We got we got to check out that live app. And also, if you're not on the YouTube, you're missing this guy popping and locking over here on the big screen. You got to see the visuals, folks. Yeah, lots of stuff. Get on the YouTube. I got some huge dates coming. Well, your special comes out today. Oh yeah, is Netflix right? Soup to Nuts. Is it today? Today, this is it. You called it. Good, wow, good catch there. Yeah. Buddy. Well, I just uh, I just did the intro for the other episodes. We had to look it up. Uh, make sure you watch that. Watch it today. And I, I said before, don't just watch it. Share it. Yes. Tell a friend. Yes. Spread the word. Put it on Twitter. Yes. Put it on Reddit. Put it on the, the thing that Zuckerberg invented. Meta. Threads. Mm -hmm. Sure. What is threads? Mm -hmm. All right. It's Phantom Twitter. thread. Put it everywhere. Look at my calendar. It just exploded in my ass. That's because you're busy. Uh, put it everywhere. Spread the word. I got one coming August 18th. It'll be probably 10 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, 7 p.m. Pacific. If you watch it live as it comes out, be in that chat. That helps the algo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, this weekend, I'm in the Cayman Islands, but next what? weekend. What? Oh, yeah. What are you, an ex con? Two family vacations in the same month. Oh. Maine with my family, Cayman with her family. Oh, he came in me. Hers is a little easier. August 3rd to the 5th, Providence Comedy Connection. August 10th to the 12th, Portland Helium. August 24th to the 26th, Dallas Improv. August 22nd, live Tuesdays in Philadelphia mm -hmm. with uh, old Marcus there. And then, yeah. uh, of course, Chicago Zanies, one night only. That will sell out because it seats 80 people. Uh, that's September 6th in between Pearl Jam shows. Cobb, September 8th and 9th. Nice. Nashville, Huntsville, Alabama, one night only, August, uh, September 20th. Nashville Zanies, September 
21st to the 23rd. Live Tuesdays at the Gramercy, September 19th. Helium Philly, October 5th through the 7th. Royal Oak, October 9th to the 21st. And after that, my fucking life is over because I have a child now. Ooh. Which is insane. And uh, wow. go subscribe to the YouTube. And uh, Mindful Metal Jacket is back now. Yeah. Currently, I think uh, Karen Fian episode came out this week or last week. That's a spicy meatball. Kind of want to watch that one. Luke Monas, a bunch of other people. Maybe I'll get you on there sometime. Please, I'd love to do it. We'll really dissect your asshole. It'll just turn into a Tuesday. We'll go right in the jizz. Um, but... Um, yeah, so a lot of good stuff. August 18th, new special. Please watch. This is my last chance to make it. This is the one, folks. Yeah. I, was, I was at the live, and it's a killer one. Uh, I'll be at Phantom Power in PA. I think Lancaster, PA. I'm doing all these uh, fun, wacky gigs. Uh, come on out, say hello. Then I'm at the Raccoon Moquette Motel in Davenport, Iowa? Whoa. Yeah, I told my agent, like, give me some wacky ones because I need to run some new material because once this special comes out, I got to I gotta start cooking. Um, then I'm going to L.A., Milwaukee, big theater tour called You Don't Say. It's all on marknormancomedy.com. Uh, get on the Patreon. Hit the website. Get a mug. Get a shirt. I don't know where the money goes. Help us with the YouTube monetizing. And I uh, think that'll do it. What do you got, Sea Dog? Uh, check out my podcast, Fun Bearable. I think for this week we'll have Alan Fitzgerald on, who is a comic. I just directed his special, super funny. It's called Straight for Pay on YouTube. Everybody's and, uh, talking about it. Yeah. It's a good title. Uh, good at Fun Bearable Pod or FunBearablePod.com for all this stuff. Yeehaw. Thank you, folks. We'll see you in hell. Praise Allah.